Uh, the 2018 NFL Draft is in the books. Exactly 256 athletes were drafted. But once the draft is over, all 32 teams start signing unrestricted free agents, or excuse me, undrafted free agents. Most clubs signing somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 undrafted players. Each team hoping to find the next Antonio Gates or Tony Jefferson. I am joined now by one of those undrafted free agents back in the year of... 2006. 2006. Mr. Cam, Cisco, Cisco, for the purpose of this conversation, you are an NFL, former NFL undrafted free agent. Yeah. But you're also an author. Mm -hmm. You're also a philanthropist. Yes. You're also just a generally good person who has a, a lot of knowledge about CTE. A little bit, yeah. But before we get to all that stuff we're going to talk about, yeah. you told me something interesting two minutes ago that I want. John Carney was in studio a couple yeah. weeks ago plugging his... His golf his app. Yeah. His golf app. Yeah. You watched that video and you told me an interesting John Carney story. Yeah, I didn't even like football when I was a kid until I saw the movie Rudy and then got invited to a Charger game. And I was at, uh, I did a little field goal kicking contest and I won. I was three for three and I got invited and I won some award. And the, the major award was to go have lunch with John Carney. And that's, my dad wanted me to be a kicker. And that's, that's what I wanted to be. It inspired me. It was so great. So that guy right there yeah. changed your life. He did. He was he was one of my, my big time heroes growing up. John sure. Carney. All right. So with that out of the way, let's talk about why you're here. First, let's start with the draft. You, you're, the phone did not ring for you. You did not expect the phone to ring back back when you were out of college, right? Not really, no. So explain to me the uh, what it's like to wait for it to ring after the draft is over. Yeah. I mean, they tell you stuff happens fast, but I had friends that literally had, you know, small offers that they said they were going to wait and see if they got a, you know, an extra $10,000 here or there or a better situation. And they never got another call and they never got a shot at the NFL. So my advice to people next year is to pick up the phone and, answer, and, and, answer take, whatever's it, and take whatever's offered and, and go for it. Because yeah. you are one of the few people who walk the face of the earth, you and your ilk, who've ever experienced an NFL training camp. You did it with the Vikings and the Bengals. Granted, it was a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. but... You did something most guys dream of. at the table. You, yeah. You, you had a seat yeah. at the table. What was that, ex to walk onto an NFL training camp field, what was that like? It was stressful. It was stressful. Uh, there's, there's a lot going on in your mind, and you're, you know, it's your shot that you've dedicated your whole entire life to. So the, the pressure is there, but um, it's definitely a stressful situation. More challenging mentally or physically? Um, looking back at it mentally, because I probably got shook loose a couple times. Got your bell rung, as we were saying. So you got were... my bell rung a couple times, and there was no way. I mean, I had injuries all over my body, and there was no way I was going to see the trainer because I. This was my one shot. I didn't want to be the guy that was a liability because he had a head injury or something like that. So, my advice is to make sure that you know the guys actually can remember those playbooks and go see the trainer and take a practice off if they need to. I'm hoping that it's, it's a different league now. Maybe it isn't, but we'll talk more about that. Uh, what, uh, program, you know, we were going to have Tyree Robinson in later today. We're going to have him in Tuesday at 6:45. He is an undrafted free agent signing with America's team. Uh, well, we're going to come back out on the camera. I want you to look into that camera. Tyree's in the room right now. What would you tell him, other than to uh, re report early? Yeah. Man, I really want you to understand that it is, it needs to be like you're starting your own business. So you need to have the type of will and work ethic to work every single waking hour should be focused on your playbook and on making the right decisions to be the guy that the coaches want that just reads his keys and does his job. And don't try to be the king of the castle or, you know, the captain of the ship, because they just want guys that can be reliable. All right. Uh, we will play that for him tomorrow, so you're in tomorrow's show. Uh, before we get to uh, what, what we want to talk about CTE, you played with the Ham uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats. Yeah. What was that like? That was great. I loved Hamilton. I had a great experience you know, there. Uh, it's, a di it's a different game. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it was really fun. I, I really liked it. And, it, you know, when you're up there, you're actually a superstar in Canada. Like, no one knows what's going on in the U.S., but in that little city, you're a major football star, so it's a good experience. It's tough to make it the way the numbers work Dude, out. But You yeah. weighed 50 pounds more then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The vegan struggle is real right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, last time you and I were together, we were at the National Football Foundation. Yeah. You were asked to stand up and be recognized. You were a former scholar athlete. What were your thoughts about uh, uh, the, the time flash before your eyes as you saw? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely reconfirmed my belief of the positive principles that football can 
give to kids and that gave to me discipline, hard work, perseverance, extreme courage. And, um, you know, it, it, those kids are just so smart and so amazing. The other thing it did was it reminded me and me and my mom got the tape out. We watched my speech and Alex Smith giving a speech and it re made me realize how bad of a public speaker I can be and how good <laughs> Alex was. And I took notes and I got, I feel like I got better from my speeches in Vegas, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Wait, 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 let's go quickly through this. So you're here uh, also talk about CTE. You, you, you played a very violent position for 13, 14 years with in, you know, with headgear that's not as good, played in the era of head, lead with your head kind of football. Yeah. Do you feel like you're a sufferer of CTE? If I look at the data and I make a, you know, completely objective opinion about this, I think that there's a 99% chance that I have CTE right now. And obviously that's motivating you to try to... I feel so much better today than I did five years ago because, I mean, five years ago, when you don't have control over every single aspect of your life and you're going to bed at a specific time, waking up at a specific time, you have your day planned, and you actually are really, you know, reflecting on each day to remember what's going on and putting things in perspective. Um, you know, when I learned that I most likely had the disease, when I realized it and opened up and admitted it, that's when I really started to get better and I started working 80 hours a week and it just, I, I'm happy to try to at least inspire others to get better. Uh, Lorena Gonzalez Fletcher, the assemblywoman who mm -hmm. co-sponsored the bill, I, uh, the Youth Safe Football. I can never get the acronym right, but whatever it is, the bill that was going to eliminate, to eliminate the age. By the way, the assemblywoman, we've asked you repeatedly to come on in, and the invitation stands. We'd love to talk to you the bill, about the bill with you. It got pulled, mm -hmm. but today they released another study, which they're going to resubmit the bill in a year's time, saying. What, what you would think, that playing youth football at a young age is detrimental. Where's your stand on, should kids be allowed to play football? Should politicians have a say in that decision? Well, the one thing that should happen is the NFL that's clearly profited from the cover-up and makes $10 billion a year should be investing a percentage of that money to fund studies. I mean, we all just need more information. It can't just be one specific study that says this and then everything stops. I mean, it could be because everyone's health is different. There's so many different things that can go into these studies. So we need to have more funding for more studies. And, you know, the worst thing that can happen is what happened to me is you realize there might be an issue and you work to get better. There's things that you can do right now to get better. And that's what I want to help uh, promote. All right. This conversation has to be continued. Cam. As always, it's wonderful to have you in. We're going sure. to do it again, right? Yep. Sure. Uh, Cameron Siskwick, everybody. Uh, that concludes our 5 p.m. newscast. But there is much more to go. And, oh, by the way, that's what we're doing tonight on the ASR. Plus, we'll see Rick in action as he emcees that uh, banquet up in San Marcos. The KUSI News at 5 is over, but here's the good news. The KUSI New News at 6 p.m. is steaming around the bend. <laughs>